Today I'm going to be sharing one of our family favorites in our household for cold winter days and nights. This cabbage soup is hearty. It is loaded with vegetables, making it very nutritious, and it can be ready in about 30 minutes. I like to think of this soup as kind of a blank canvas. You can add the veggies that your family likes, omit the ones they don't like, add spices that they like, make it spicy, make it mild, whatever your family prefers. I also like to think you can make this um, vegetarian friendly, uh, keto friendly. Basically, you can make this however your family prefers. Sometimes I add rice and ground beef and I turn it into a kind of a stoop, as Rachel Ray likes to call it, <laughs> um, rather than a soup. Um, and then other times I just do like I'm going to show you today where it's just strictly vegetables. Now I do use chicken stock. So if you do want to make this straight vegetarian, um, I would just use a vegetable stock. But um, again, it's a blank canvas so you can make it however your family likes and it can change each time. Basically what I'm saying is get creative, make it your own or make it exactly like I'm going to make it today. Either way, you will feel great feeding this to your family. It is a powerhouse of nutrients with all of these veggies. So um, just make it your own. The star of this recipe is of course cabbage. But did you know just how many nutrients this round ball of goodness has? Well, after looking online, I found a few facts that uh, you can look and fact check me as well. I found that the leaves of cabbage are full of vitamin C potassium, magnesium. It's also anti-inflammatory and full of fiber. All great things. So what does all of this mean? It means that just this one veggie, which there's plenty more in this recipe you'll find out, is so full of nutrients that you will feel good about feeding your family. You'll be healthy and get this, it may even help you lose a little weight along the way. So enough talking, let's get cooking this. Here's just a quick shot of the ingredients that we'll be using today. Start by peeling and washing your carrots. Then wash your celery and we will be reserving these tops. We'll use those later in the video. Peel off the couple outer layers of leaves and then wash your cabbage. Now I turn on the Instant Pot to saute on low. The time will automatically be set for 30 minutes and I just leave it at the 30 minutes. If you are new to Instant Pot and you didn't know, that little hole on the side of the pot is perfect for holding the lid. Now we're going to add the coconut oil so that can begin heating so we can saute our vegetables. While that is heating, let's cut our veggies. Remember to curl your fingers in, or as my husband likes to call, finger scrunchies. Once you've chopped, you can go ahead and start dropping the vegetables in to give you some more room on the cutting board, of course. You're doing a rustic chop of all of your vegetables, but try to keep the carrots and celery and onions all the same size. Again, reminder for finger scrunchies. You want them all the same size so that they'll cook evenly. Now it's time to dice the onion. And this is also the perfect time for a little happy dance with the loved ones in your kitchen. I don't know about you all, but my family gets very excited about dinner time. <laughs> what you can't see on camera right now is I have a garbage bowl behind me next to the spices. I always just have a spare bowl next to me somewhere for any 
onion peel, for example, or the ends of carrots or the ends of celery that you would typically just throw in the garbage, I throw those in the bowl just to save me a couple trips to the garbage can and some time. Now I'm adding salt and pepper to taste. If you haven't seen the new Instant Pot, we will be linking it below. This Instant Pot is the Duo, so it is not only an Instant Pot, but an air fryer. And I do love my Ninja Foodie that you see behind me, but this is also convenient if you travel. If you take your Instant Pot, we camp, and so this is a perfect one pot tool for us just to carry in the camper. Okay, now I'm turning my heat. I'm adjusting it up to high just to get a kickstart on everything sauteing. And I'm beginning to prep my garlic now. You don't want to add garlic at the same time as carrots or onions or celery because they do take a lot longer to cook. There's my garbage bowl. And the garlic would burn if you added them at the same time. So get those other vegetables sauteing first then prep your garlic and then you will dice and add that. Now I will also prep my zucchini. You add the zucchini and the garlic at the same time. Zucchini is also a vegetable that cooks very quickly. So I elected to peel part of the zucchini and it looks like I need to sharpen my knife. Maybe I'll do a video on that soon too. But anyway, I elected to peel part of the zucchini. You don't have to do that. You can leave all of the peel on or you can peel all of it off if you'd like. I wouldn't recommend that because it would probably just turn into mush. But again, you can make this soup your own however you like it. Now let's stir everything since it's been sauteing on high. And now we'll add the zucchini. And we'll mince the garlic and add the garlic. Now is a good time to mention if you are going to use fresh bell pepper, I would add that now as well. If you're using the frozen, which is what I had on hand this day, then you'll add that later. Now I'm going to add in all of the spices. There's no order of this, of course. The measurements are all listed in our recipe below, but now is the time you add all of your seasoning. I'm adding oregano now. And just a reminder, when you are using dried herbs, they need to be woken up. They've been sitting on the shelf for a little while, so rub the herbs in between your hands. That's going to release the oils and wake them up. This is only with herbs such as oregano or parsley or basil. Your seasoning, so here I'm using lemon pepper. Of course, you don't have to rub lemon pepper. Um, I'm just measuring it in my hand there to show you approximately how much I'm using. But again, dried herbs, rub them together in your hands and that will release the oils and give a more vibrant flavor. This McCormick Grill Mate seasoning is one of my favorites. It's garlic and herb, and I think I pretty much put this in everything. This seems like a lot of seasonings that I'm using, and again, you may not like all of these, so you don't have to use all of these, but this is just what I've used as I've developed this recipe over the years, and this is just what we like. Now, I'm using turmeric here. This is a good time to mention turmeric will stain your clothes. So be very careful with the turmeric because it will stain for sure. Now I'm using crushed red pepper. This is one that just gives a little bit of heat. So of course, if you don't want any heat, completely omit that. I used so little, you really couldn't, it wasn't spicy, but again, just use the seasonings you like. Okay, now I'm turning the heat off. I'm going to add a cup of water and then I'm going to use my spoon to scrape up all those good bits. We're kind of deglazing the pan at this point. 
but those bits that are on the bottom right now is where all of the flavor is. Now we're going to add in the celery greens that we reserved earlier as well as our frozen bell peppers. Look at that color it adds. Now let's stir everything together. Now we're going to turn the Instant Pot back onto saute on low and we will begin to add our canned tomatoes. Make sure not to drain the juices from the cans of tomatoes. There is lots of flavor in the juice there, so of course you want that in the soup. Here I'm using my wooden spoon just to break up the whole tomatoes. And now I'm adding the remainder of the water. Here is another time to mention that you can adjust this to your liking. If you want a brothier soup, add more water. If you want a thicker soup, add less water. Now I'm adding the better than bouillon. I am using chicken flavor here, but have I mentioned you can make this recipe your own? <laughs> if you would like to make this vegetarian, you can use a vegetable broth here or you can use a beef broth. Now add the lid and now we will turn the instant pot back on using the saute function on high. At this time we begin to prep the cabbage. And remember to take out the core. I just do a rustic chop on the cabbage again, trying to keep your cuts uniform so the cabbage will all cook at the same time. And you will notice that I only used half the head of cabbage, but sometimes I use more. Be sure to check out my other video using the leftover cabbage. You won't believe what I'm making. Now add the chopped cabbage to the soup. And if you chose to use canned corn for this recipe, you will add that now. Once you have added all of the cabbage, you will cover and cook for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. This is going to let the cabbage still be a little bit crunchy. If you don't want any crunch to your cabbage, then I would recommend covering and cooking for approximately 15 to 30 minutes. And here it is. Let's get ready to eat. Look at that beautiful color and all those nutritious veggies. Well, there you have it, friends. A meal that is ready in about 30 minutes is full of nutrients and can possibly even help you lose weight. Let's give it a try. Mm. perfect for those cold winter days and nights. I hope that you guys will try this recipe. And if you do, I hope that you will share with us by commenting below what you think. And if you make it your own, we want to hear that too. Um, if you like this video, I hope you'll like and subscribe. 